guys, it's Gamer Aimer here, and I have my list right here of all of the Japanese exclusive Nintendo 64 games that I'm trying to add into my Nintendo 64 worldwide collection. So as I already have a full North American and the PAL exclusives, I thought that it was time to go ahead and complete the Japanese game set. And there's not that many, there's like around 80 some or so. And I picked up tons more at the Cleveland Gaming Classic video game convention that I went to. I even found some in the surrounding stores in Ohio and then online. So all of these awesome games I've had a chance to go through and try and play just a little bit of and I can't wait to share these awesome scores with you guys. So first up we have this game. Now I'm not really too sure how to pronounce a lot of these Japanese titles but this is pretty much a wrestling game and it has Brave Spirits in the title. So this is like your pro wrestling Nintendo 64 games. Definitely reminds me of some of the North American games that we have here. Just those classic games. Now, once you get the moves down, it's actually a lot of fun, but it does take a little bit of adjusting and different things trying to like get to your different characters. So there are different styles, different types of characters, Definitely different than the ones that we have here in North America, but it really reminds me of that old classic feel of those awesome wrestling games that I grew up playing and absolutely loved. So this one is one that you could still actually play the game without knowing Japanese. So I've definitely been having a blast playing this one and I can't wait to explore it a little bit more. But if you guys enjoyed this content, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification so that you never miss out as I'm constantly adding more and more items into my video game collection. Now onto these games here, sumo wrestling games. There's this one and then there's the second one in the set. So these, you also have a little bit of a story in the game, but you don't necessarily have to know Japanese to play it. So pretty much you start at the beginning in the first one and you just get better. There's better ranking, there are different mini games for character development, and you pretty much just sumo wrestle. You want to push the opponent out of the ring. You have different moves. The music is pretty fun. And in the second game here, it actually becomes a lot more difficult because there are some more like cutscenes that have more Japanese writing. So there's a lot more dialogue. It has those less action packed cutscenes like the first one, but it's still a lot of fun. Now, there isn't really anything too crazy about these games, but it's just something different that we did not get over here in North America. So they're pretty inexpensive as well, and you can have a blast playing these, especially if you want to try out a different set or style of game. And then onto this game. So this one is like this Battle Phoenix game. Now these are modeled after the different Hudson marble shooting toys. So there are plenty of characters to choose from, and this is more of a multiplayer game and you have like these different mini games, one of which you get to like shoot these different marbles at these moles. It's kind of like a whack-a-mole where like these little creatures pop up and you have to shoot the marbles at them. You get to pick different things as well. So there's just so many different options in this game, but I feel like I'd have such a better time playing it with some of my friends. So I'll definitely have to look into this game a little bit more and just see if there's any other fun mini games or if it has a lot more to offer. And then one of my favorite parts is I accidentally picked up this game. So this is known as World Cup 98 over here in North America, but this had all of this Japanese writing. It said World Cup France 98. So I thought that this might have been like an exclusive game, but it's not. It's just a Japanese version of the North American game. So this was one that definitely tricked me up. And I'll have to stick to my list and hopefully find some more. And then I found this fishing game, which I thought was just like a standalone fishing game, but it has so much more to it. There's like this crazy story to this game. So this is like Nushi Sori 64, not really too sure how to pronounce it, but this is a 2D RPG. So you have this whole entire like character list that you get to choose from. And pretty much you want to save the area from these earthquakes. And to do that, you think that the catfish is causing the earthquakes. So you set out to fish. So the fish and the underwater aspects to this game actually look pretty good. 
And this is definitely an interesting game because you get to like struggle and fight with these fish as you're trying to reel them in. So there's so much more to it than what I even imagined. And this was a pretty inexpensive game. So this is one that I'll have to look into a little bit more. And then on to this game. I actually found this at the convention and I noticed something very interesting about the St. Andrews Old Course game. Now this is pretty much like a run of the mill golfing game that does not look the best on the Nintendo 64. But on the back, someone took the time to like chisel out the back piece so that they could play it in their North American console. So I thought that it was wild that someone went to that extreme because the backs are different on the Japanese versus North American versions. And instead of just swapping out the back with like a North American cart, they decided to go through and like cut this. So I thought that that was just bizarre that someone would try and do that, especially for this golfing game. And then on to another soccer game. So they absolutely love these like sports games over in Japan. We have J League Dynamite Soccer 64. So this has like a full licensed set of these J League characters. So this is one of those officially licensed soccer games on the Nintendo 64. Pretty inexpensive like a lot of their sports games are. Then on to this one, we have Power League 64. So I thought that this was pretty interesting because the players don't have faces, but this game does have these realistic graphics and different animations throughout the game, especially at this time when this game came out on the Nintendo 64. Now, of course, looking back, a lot of the things seem a little bit dated, and it's just crazy to me that the characters just didn't have the faces. So I thought that that was definitely an odd thing that I noticed right away. And then on to this Japanese like powerful pro five of this particular baseball game so this one is another one where you kind of like travel through with this character you're a high school baseball player and you have to like keep going to try and get better at playing baseball so these just have some pretty neat little characters cool little design that they're going through and they had so many different ones of this particular game so i had to add this one in the set so just like that, I added 10 more Nintendo 64 games into the collection. Now only nine of those were Japanese exclusive titles. So, so far I am making my way highlighting as many games as I can on this list that I printed out. And I'll have to go through some of my games that I have in this whole collection already. So I'll have to show off some of the Japanese exclusive games that really got me started into collecting for the full worldwide set of games. So definitely let me know which games you like the best. Did you like the sumo wrestling games? Did you like the wrestling game? Did you like some of these other like sports games? Just let me know in the comments below. And of course, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Go ahead and check out all of my other videos and stay tuned for more.